Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a polynomial system. We have x times the quantity x plus y plus z equals 1, y times the quantity x plus y plus z equals 2, and z times the quantity x plus y plus z equals 6. And we're going to be solving for x, y, and z. Great. So we don't really have the symmetry that we sometimes get with systems. For example, if you look at these equations, x, y, z don't play the same role because the constants are different on the right-hand side. Okay, so the values of x, y, z cannot really easily be interchanged. Anyways, let's go ahead and go about solving this problem. Uh, I'm going to be presenting two methods. Let's start with the first one. All right. So for, for my first method, I'm going to do the following. Let's go ahead and number these equations. Let this be equation number one, let this be equation number two, and let this be equation number three. First of all, I'm going to divide one by two. Okay? Let's go ahead and do that and simplify it. And then I'll be dividing one by three. You could also do two by three, doesn't matter, same, same thing. But when I divide the first equation, by the second equation, that should give me one half. And now we can go ahead and simplify. Obviously, we do need the condition that x plus y plus z does not equal zero. I mean, that should be obvious because if that's the case, then you can't really find any x, y, z values. And obviously, that's not going to uh, happen, right? It, it doesn't satisfy the system. So, so x plus y plus z does not equal zero. Let's go ahead and simplify this. Now from here we get um, x, x to y ratio. Uh, you can write y in terms of x or vice versa, but let's go ahead and use a different variable here and write x as k and y as 2k. So the ratio is maintained, right? And we're going to stick to x equals k because when we do first and third, uh, we, we can use the same thing. All right, great. Let's go ahead and do first and third now. We have x times, we have x times x plus y plus z, and that is divided by z times x plus y plus z. And that should equal 1 over 6, right? Now, the same thing happens here when x plus y plus z cancels out. We get the ratio of x to z as 1 over 6. Great. So from here, we can safely say that x equals k and z equals 6k. So here's the thing, here's the critical part. Sometimes with ratio and proportion problems, you don't get the same thing for x, but here we did. Uh, so you, you always have to check for that. If you don't get the same thing, then you can adjust your variables, uh, ratios, so on and so forth. So we get x equals k, y equals 2k, and z equals 6k. What can I do with this? Well, I have three equations. Let's use the first one, use number one. Number one is x times x plus y plus z equals one. Now let's replace x with k and y with 2k and z with 6k. And this gives us the following. k plus 2k plus 6k is equal to 9k. And then k times 9k is equal to 9k squared. And that equals one. From here we get k squared equals 1 ninth. And that gives us two solutions, k equals one-third and k equals negative one-third. Awesome. So two values for k means that we can find two sets of values for x, y, z. From here, x, y, z is going to be, and I can write it as an ordered pair because obviously they're not going to switch around because that wouldn't satisfy the system. But x, comma y, comma z can be written as, um, if k is one-third, notice that x is equal to k, so x is going to be one-third, y is going to be two-thirds, and z is going to be six-thirds, but I can write it as two, two, or it's going to be the opposites, negative one-third, negative two-thirds, and negative two. Okay, those are going to be the possible ordered triples for x, y, z. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the here you can see that x plus y plus z does not equal zero. Let's go ahead and talk about the second method. All right. My second method 
is a kind of, let me rewrite the system, x times x plus y plus e is equal to 1. With the y, you get a 2. And with the z, you do get a 6. Okay. Uh, why did I pick these numbers? Because 1 plus 2 plus 6 is 9. And we kind of saw that here too, right? k plus 2k plus 6k give us 9. So 9 uh, is a perfect square. That's why I picked these numbers. And this approach basically relies on pretty much the same thing, but slightly differently. Uh, we're going to add these equations. You know, if you're solving a system of equations, uh, there's a few things you can do. You can add the equations, you can multiply the equations, you can divide like we used in the first method, and uh, you substitute, obviously. So there's a couple things you can do. Here we're going to add them all up because adding them up is going to give us the following. x times x plus y plus z plus y times x plus y plus z and then plus z times x plus y plus z. Now we're going to get x plus y plus z as a common factor, but notice that it is going to be multiplied by the same thing. So it's going to be this number squared equals 1 plus 2 plus 6, which is 9. And from here you get x plus y plus z is equal to 3, or x plus y plus z is equal to negative 3. And then by looking at each of these equations, it doesn't really matter which one, but let's start with the first one. If x plus y plus z is equal to 1, that means x is equal to one third, right? Because this is three, x needs to be one third. And pretty much the same way, you can find the other variables, but let me go ahead and rewrite all those equations. This is equal to two, so this is three, therefore this needs to be two thirds, x is one third, z, y is two thirds. And finally, with z, we get z times x plus y plus z is equal to six, and x plus y plus z is equal to 3. Therefore, from here, z becomes 2. But that's just one of the uh, sets. If you go with uh, x plus y plus z equals negative 3, then you're just going to get the opposites of x, y, z. Let's go ahead and rewrite our ordered triples. It's going to be 1 third. Oopsies. Messed up. 1 third, 2 thirds, and 2. You could also do the following. You can put a plus minus in front of them and that's just gonna represent. You just gotta be careful though. Plus goes with the plus and minus goes with the plus. That's why we have something called plus minus and minus plus. And I know the way I write it is kind of upside down. It's minus plus, but I just call that plus minus. All right, I hope this makes sense. Now, uh, with the uh, here's another approach that you can use with the second method. Notice that uh, we can write x as 1 over x plus y plus z because uh, x times x plus y plus z is equal to 1. So once you find the value of x plus y plus z, uh, then you can find the value of x from here. By the way, uh, you could also modify this equation and call each one of these like k and then, you know, the second one like m and the third one as n. And this is going to be a parametric system. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment. Like and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.